Mm -hmm. Authenticity builds longevity. Mm -hmm. And our goal was never to be, have really good revenue for 30 days or be really good for a summer. Like we hadn't had a month under 100K in going on six years. Wow. Because it's authenticity. We never go away from who we are. We never go away from the brand message. But what we have to do is be clear on what our message is. Mm -hmm. Clarity is king. Clear messages scales businesses. Nobody buys what they don't understand. And so starting your business, if you say, you know what, I'm starting my business, I'm putting it out. And typically we do it based off of our ideas. Thank you for, the, for being here. Yes. Um, so I'm actually excited about this um, building a brand from scratch because I do want to ask in the audience, uh, how many of you are, are attempting as even current or aspiring, like the brand that you're doing is coming like you're getting it out the mud. Like it's, it's coming from scratch. Okay. That's the whole room, y'all. It's going to be a good conversation. Yes, yes, yes. I like it. Okay, so let's start off um, with key strategies. What key strategies did you implement when first launching your brand to establish a strong, memorable identity in the market? Yeah, so, so the first thing that we did was like uh, May of 2015, I spent a ton of time just focusing on one home run concept, mm -hmm. just having something that was really dope and then getting really clear on the avatar that we were trying to reach and so like we didn't stop until we got that perfect like design that when i showed different people is like hey would you spend 30 dollars on a hat for this not do you like it but would you spend money on it and like that one thing like changed everything for us just spending time getting design right so let me let me go on let me go on and say this <laughs> he sent me like 49 designs <laughs> And, and it was hot dumpster juice. <laughs> but here's the thing, it was the one. And the reason that's important is because he wasn't emotionally tied to the idea. And most of us who start brands from the beginning, we're so tied to the idea. It's like, oh, my mama gave me this, or this came from my grandfa grandfather, or somebody passed away. And we never ever give ourselves permission to pivot when we need to. So when we had that one, we were like, okay, this is a joint right here, this is the one. And we were able to make millions off of one design. Wow. And most people struggle with trying to put out 50 that's not proven. So when Tim's like, that this is a hack, y'all. Take this one and run with this. When he say, would you spend $34 for this hoodie? Would you spend 48 for this hoodie? What you're doing is you're giving your friends and family and people around you the permission to be a consumer and not your friends and family. And when they're able to do that, now they can say, nah. <laughs> or they say, I would spend my money on that. And a lot of times we just go with not asking those type of questions to lead to the success. So when he did that, it was, it was over because we had a home run idea. Wow. What was that particular design? I'm just curious. Oh, it was, so the design was our first uh, logo, which was the worship logo. Oh. And so like for us, we were getting to the point we've been best friends for 20 years and so at 33 you know being a christian you don't you want gospel infused streetwear mm -hmm. you don't want to wear a shirt that says you know coca-cola jesus yeah. is the real thing yeah. <laughs> you Not know what i'm saying yeah. so you wanted to have something dope so being in a space where you can rock something that's streetwear to an event or to church is something that was unique about eight years ago where nobody was doing that wow. and so for yeah. us that was what we got really clear on, being able to create a concept and designs that fit a space that solved the problem. I think so many people want to create concepts, but they don't have, they, they're not clear on the avatar and who they're trying to reach. Mm -hmm. And when you're clear on who you're trying to reach, then you know how to speak the language of the person that you're trying to serve. Yeah. And so for us, we happen to be the people in the category that we serve. So it's one thing to like, have somebody who go to church. It's another thing to say, I still want to wear fresh sneakers like Gabe, mm -hmm. you know, the guy who matches his socks and his shoes, I do that. you know, I do that. Uh, and still be able to get fresh. So you want to yeah. be able to merge the two. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right. Um, so basically that actually, I think that kind of leads to my next question um, is maintaining the authenticity, authenticity 
and consistency in your brand messaging, especially as the brand is growing and evolving, because you did say something about giving yourself permission to pivot. So does that pivot include changing messaging? Like how do you, how do you maintain the authenticity and consistency of it all? Yeah, I think when I think about that, I, I really go to, okay, what does authenticity do? Mm -hmm. And we say this around the shop and even with our clients, authenticity builds longevity. Mm -hmm. And our goal was never to be, like to be, have really good revenue for 30 days or be really good for a summer. Like we hadn't had a month under 100K in going on six years. Wow. Because it's authenticity. We never go away from who we are. We never go away from the brand message. But what we have to do is be clear on what our message is. Mm -hmm. Clarity is, clarity is king. Clear messages scales businesses. Nobody buys what they don't understand. And so starting your business, if you say, you know what, I'm starting my business, I'm putting it out, and typically we do it based off of our idea. Nobody cares that much about your idea. If it doesn't benefit them, and if it doesn't solve their problem, they're not thinking about you that much. They're thinking about the issues that they have. You yeah. know, so. I I think one of the things that most brands miss is they miss problem solution. Yeah. Like everything is about problem solution and unique selling point. For sure. Like getting really loud about what's unique about your brand. If I ask you, hey, what's different about what you do than any other streetwear brand and you can't tell me, that's a recipe for not getting any sales because right. you can't tell me what's different. Yeah. You can't tell me what problem you solve in the market or who you serve and what well, everybody. Right. You don't serve everybody like it's people that still trying to promote Gabe uh, beard oil. You better not do it. You did. It. <laughs> you know, I, my brother why, is 40. Why, he's never going to need it. I'm, I'm, it's not. It's you, know, not gonna you, know, you know what sucks about that? I'm, a, I'm really 41 and I, I don't need it. I want you. You're a terrible person, man. Why would you do stuff like that? Hey, great. Hey, he, he be grooming those three little hairs <laughs> under his chin. But it, but it, like, bro, but if I turn, those but go. if I turn to the side, you can see you can a little something. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can, see a shadow. That, that one hurt me. You're doubling down on her to be like that. That's crazy. But check this out. Great value, Kyrie Irving. Oh. <laughs> I, had, I had to, I had to do that. 20, 20 years in. But you know, you think about that, and it's funny. But think about how many or how long you work on the business and without getting sales. Four years, 10 years. We got a couple of our clients, they working on their business for 10 years and not being able to get sales. Never knew who they were talking to. They were marketing to everybody. They were hitting nobody. When they got clear on problem solution and who they were actually targeting, in 30 days they did 15K. Mm -hmm. Now they have 50K a month mm -hmm. because they got clear on who they were talking to. So, Tim, is, is, he's savage for that, but he's absolutely right. If you try to market beard oil to me, I'm just going to look at you like you're crazy. Exactly. <laughs> and this is typically what happens on timelines. Because mm -hmm. one of the first things that we do is we say, okay, I got a brand, I got an idea, I'm about to start a website. Mm -hmm. I'm about to put it on social. And we continue to double down marketing an idea that's not proven to the wrong people. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, if you continue marketing something that's not connecting, Two things happen. You slowly kill your business and you slowly kill your passion. Mm -hmm. And you never get out of the hobby phase. Right. And the and the difference between like the switch is very easy. Yeah. If you just learn how to say things in a way that gets the consumer to sell themselves. Yeah. Right? A lot of us are trying to sell things and it comes off as salesy. How many of y'all like to be sold stuff? Who like who likes somebody to be walk up to their door trying to sell them things? Yeah. Nobody. Nobody. But if you learn how to create an environment where somebody says, oh man, I'm gonna look fly in that shirt, that's really dope. Now they're selling themselves. You don't have to sell anything when you create the right environment for the product that you're selling. You don't have to sell it. You just have to create the environment that's conducive to me having a conversation with myself to buy it. Yeah. And you do that with the way you post. It's, if you just make one shift, it changes everything for your business. Creating the environment is everything, and that's the biggest struggle if you're talking about e mm. If you go to a, a pop-up or a live event, people are already in that space to buy. And most of us as creators, and Nick and Marlon do this well, just in person, just being able to just like gather the energy, you know what I'm saying, in the room, and, and people buy like crazy. Here's the issue when you want to go online. You got to create the environment. Yes. 
and you got to like take somebody who had no idea, no desire to buy one day and then buy from you. And most of the time we just don't set up our brand in a way that really like helps the customers go through the journey and become part of your community. But when you do that, it don't change your brand. It actually changes your life because it affords you to do the things that you really want to do when you do it the right way. Brand owners that's ready to acquire their first 100 customers and make over $1,000 every single month, this is for you. We have created our Activate Your Vision University. We have been working on this for the last four months. And inside of this university, it has every system that we have created and are currently using to continuously scale our brand world and vision right now. Yes, you're gonna get the Facebook ads. Yes, you're gonna get the email and text message marketing play. But ultimately, I want you to join our network of brand owners for only $7 for seven days. Now, at the end of these seven days, let me go ahead on and break the news to you. We will not charge your card like other most subscription-based programs. All right, We will allow you to experience and enjoy these seven days without having you thinking on the eighth day, oh, I'm about to get charged. No, this is not that. We want to see if you are a good fit for the network, and we will also want to see if we are a good fit for you to help you scale and help you grow to, like I said, acquiring your first 100 customers and making over $1,000 every single month. Click the link somewhere on the screen. Get access for only $7. Every brand owner, every clothing brand, we can help you scale. Let's get it. And then I just want to back up because I know you talked about Avatar, and um, I wanted to make sure that the audience understood what that is. Um, for me, it translates, we use the word target demo, and that's what they mean by avatar. And so I do want to know for everyone in the room, uh, do you all understand as far as what you're selling, who your, who your target demo is for your particular brand? Um, and that's super important because like you said, when you cast it at net, if you're casting that net out into the whole ocean, you're going to be pulling at everything. But I would rather cast my net to where I know the fish yeah. actually is. And then there are, I know for us, there are certain little tactics that we use to develop the, the target demo. Like we actually have our avatar is like, it has, it has a name. He, he has a, cause our target demo is men for wrap snacks. So we have a whole lineup of what this, this particular man likes. So for example, his name might be, um, I'm just going to throw out a name, but his name, his name may be Gabe. Gabe is, um, he, you know, we know what, what Gabe's education level is. We know what his income level is. Beard and a mustache. <laughs> but no, but honestly true. We, we know his style. We know the type of music he wants to hear. Like basically we put a profile together for Gabe. His music, his income level, whether he has a family, there's a backstory about him. We know if he's a single dad, if he has a girlfriend, does he have aspirations of being married one day, where he likes to dress. I mean, how he likes to dress, where he likes to shop. It's like, it's a whole workup. And then as we're putting out content, as we're coming up with ideas, we always ask ourselves the, que the question, is this something gay? The avatar that we created would gay like this. If we know that this is something that's not going to appeal to gay, and we don't even put it out there because I would rather I would rather hit the bullseye than to keep just kind of like throwing something up against the wall and let's see what sticks. Yeah. And, and the shift is the idea that you have for your business. It's about you. Mm -hmm. But when you start making money online consistently, it's about them. The idea has to turn into the offer. So just like with what you're saying, like that's the deep dive that we talk to our clients about. Like, you can't, you can't snorkel building a brand. You got to put on a scuba gear, right? You got to think about the things that most people don't think about. Mm -hmm. Me and Tim were talking this morning and we said, bro, listen, man, like let's continue solving problems. Mm -hmm. Brand building is about the race to who's going to solve more problems. Airplanes, mm -hmm. got airplanes, trains. We have uh, Instacart, all these things. These are all problems that people had and someone came up with the solution. So when you start thinking about that, the, the avatar, most people just run right to content. We start creating content. And our, our biggest, like the biggest thing that we execute on is trying to recreate a trending sound. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to create a reel that work for another company for their avatar. Mm -hmm. Get clear on the brand message. Your brand message helps you dictate who the person is that you're serving, the avatar, the target audience. Mm -hmm learn everything about this particular person. You can't do that until you're clear on what you do. When you know the avatar, now you can create content because content is the vehicle that carries the brand message 
over to the avatar. This is how we've been able to get consistent sales and build and have four brands because we really like in on those areas. How, yeah. how many of y'all want to hit 100,000, 500,000 a month with your brand? Okay, some of y'all raise your hand like this. Y'all ain't even serious enough. So. Okay, so, so check this out. We had this company, right, that, we, that works, that's one of our clients. And I was like, hey, if you want to get to 100,000 a month, like in the next 30 days, you need to start talking through Problem Solution. It's a skincare company sending out 50% off, 30% off, 20% off emails every day. I said, they're not engaged because they got a million of those in their inbox. But what's the problem you solve? And so we literally started talking through like, hey, show a before and after. Do it a certain way. Use this certain language. They literally did $5,000 from the very first email just from making the switch. So when you start framing your product in a way to where somebody has that conversation, I can't emphasize that enough, that you have to be the one solving that problem, framing your product as the best in class. Yeah. You got the best brand in your space. You got the best brand in your space. You got to believe that and everything that you put out got to exude that you're the best in class. For sure. And if you don't do that, if you don't put your stuff out that way, it's never going to appear that way to us because we don't care. We only care, am I going to look good in it? Yeah. Is this going to be fly? Is this product going to solve my problem, yeah. right? Or when I walk in, am I going to stand out and be different from everybody else? So if you learn how to clearly communicate that, everything changes. And, and these things seem like, Okay, I heard that before, or it may seem I hadn't heard it before at all. But the shift is not looking at the sexy part of brand building. Mm -hmm. Who's the manufacturer? Mm -hmm. How I run the ad? How I shoot content? And we were talking with the guys on the podcast the other day. It's like people just ask the wrong questions. As a brand owner, if you ask how more than you ask why, then you're going to play a losing game. Because when you understand the why, now it's a psychology of selling, the psychology of building your brand, you can duplicate the success. Remember, the goal is not to win once. The goal is to win over and over and over again and change the trajectory of our families and our lives and everything else. But you have to do the right thing. I was, in fact, we were sitting, sitting back there and somebody saw an ad. And it was a lady with a women's boutique. And she said, hey, ladies, uh, we have these clothes here, here, here. Go check us out. Go check us out. And I said, oh, I got time today. We, we waiting from the start. Hey, she I put just, the comment on her. On the ad. On the ad, on ad about ad. brand building. About brand building. So check this out. My response, it wasn't even about her. It was for the other people who saw it who think that same way. Hey, the ladies who are here on this post, they're here because they're looking to grow their companies. What you're doing is you're advertising your business in the wrong space to the wrong people. Mm -hmm but we teach you how to do this, I'm gonna send you a DM. Mm. And it's the small tweaks and the nuances, y'all, that most people don't think about, that if you do it, it's gonna shift everything for your business. And if you don't grow, your brand won't grow. As you grow, everything about what you want for the business, it changes and it, does, it happens fast. And uh, so many people have level 10 concepts but a level two skill set and if you learn how to get to a level 10 skill set mm -hmm. that's the difference between knowing something and executing some of y'all might be saying well i know all the stuff y'all talking about but the do you know how to execute it for your brand sure. that's where you get to the next level you got to learn how to do the thing that you know how to do or that you think you know how to do and i'm here to say you don't know how to do it if it's not making you money right. Right. If you're not making a hundred thousand off something that somebody is teaching, you probably should listen until you get to the point where you can execute on it rather than just say, oh, I already know that. You don't know anything until you scale in it. When, when somebody say like if we look at a brand and we like, man, we, we better than them. I say, no, we not. They doing 10 times as much as us, <laughs> yeah. so they doing yeah. something that we don't right. understand enough to execute on. Sure. So you don't know it. Challenge yourself to be better and get better in every area. Every yeah. time, like every day, it's a grind for us. Like when we sit around in design meetings, it's like, okay, what is our avatar gonna think when they see this? Are they gonna look good in it? Are they gonna feel like this is the one for me? Yeah. And that's the comments we love to see when we drop something new. Like this the one, I gotta have this. Yeah. Like it's the difference between something feeling like a want and something feel like a need. Like, oh, I want that, but I ain't willing to spend my money on it. Yeah. 
I need that. It's like, I don't care what the price is. I'm buying it. It's value. Right? Yeah. So it's the difference between a, a, a coach purse and a Louis purse. Yeah. You know? it's, it's value. Yeah. And I would say before, before we go, y'all, brand building should be fun. It should be fun. Yeah. We, we gamified the whole experience, right? Most people start business because they're running away from something, not because of what they really want. Mm -hmm. So don't think about the thing you're running away from because you won't stay up late at night and burn the midnight oil to do the right things for the business. Tim was a banker. I was a behavior interventionist with the school district. Wow. We didn't want to, Tim threw away all his suits, mainly because he could never get the neck size right. The joint was just, it was, he was struggling. It was wild. It was, it was, it was, a, it was a bad look. Stacy Adams, wide leg, slacks, the whole, the whole shebang. But here's the, here's the thing though, here's the thing. Kyrie is Yeah, Kyrie, wow. Kyrie. Here, here's the thing. What we did though is we locked it, we, we really locked in and we said, we're gonna give this six months because we only sold five hats the first week. Four was to friends and family, none was my family. Wow. For six months, we dedi gave dedicated time and attention. Some of you may have never ever worked on your brand without doing something else at the same time. Dedicated time and attention to the business, what you water is what's gonna grow.